Yo, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be sharing a PS4 PvP starter guide in Ark Survival Evolved. So stay tuned as I'll be telling you the first 15 steps to getting started in Ark. It's been a cold winter and it's lasted far too long. Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Jay Carter Ray from GrowOnYouTube.com teaching you how to be better. And PvP can be very, very difficult if you don't know what you're doing and you're a new player to Ark. This video will help get you to grips with the types of concepts and the types of things that you should be doing in order to succeed. There's that bird. No, he stole my stingray. He didn't take the berries that one, uh, but boom on the thing. So you do need to give them meat. All right, so that is Itchy Thornus. That will steal your stuff. So you kind of want to have me in your last slot to prevent that from stealing your stuff. That isn't even part of my tip guide, but that happened. So I might as well let you guys know. Now, the first thing you want to do in Ark, like the first thing that happens is you start off on the beach. You don't have this lovely crossbow. You have nothing and you look like a naked bum and this is the life that you're living. It's not great, it's not great. The first thing you wanna do is you want to get the resources to make a pickaxe. And in order to do that, you pick up stones off the beach, you beat up some trees to get thatch and wood, and then I believe you're able to make a pickaxe with just that, right? Let's check, let's check. He made a pickaxe in, in a hot sec. Primitive, melee, and then you can make your pickaxe. Obviously, I'm not gonna make a pickaxe. Well, you know what, let's do it. Let's make the, the crappy pickaxe. And then with that pickaxe, you wanna get flint. So you get your pickaxe out, you hit some stone, and then you can make a hatchet. You also want to make a wooden club ASAP. In order to make a wooden club, you need wood and fiber. In order to get fiber, you need to have nothing in your hand. So whatever you currently have equipped in your hotbar, you press that exact same shortcut in order to put it away. And then you hold triangle to get fiber from plants. The wooden club is essential. It's essential starting out because it is basically your only protection against high level players. And it's also a great tool to knock out some dillos. Also, the basics of harvesting is the pickaxe will give you the secondary resource of whatever you're har harvesting, and the hatchet will give you the main resource. So if you're harvesting a tree, the pickaxe will give you more thatch, while the hatchet will give you more wood. Now, both of these will get you thatch and wood, but whichever one you use will determine which one you get more of. So after you got the hatchet and the pickaxe, Basically, you want to get enough resources to build a quick thatch hideout. A one by one is fine. You just want to create a spawn point. You probably want to make a few spares as well, just so you can stay alive. So let's make a few spares. You need fiber, flint and wood to make those because you will need to kill things in order to get hide as that is very important to making your bed or your sleeping bag. Now, here's a Lystrosaurus. It's sad, but we need to kill him. Come here, Lystrosaurus. Come here. These are very, very easy to kill. They're gonna run away. They're not really gonna do much. And then you'll take out your hatchet in order to get the hide. Oh, this fucking bird. Go away, bruv. Can't you see I'm doing stuff? Oh, it's a vulture. Annoying. Well, luckily I've got God mod on, so I don't really have to worry. So, got the hide. Let's teach him a lesson real quick. Yeah, that taught him. You can also kill dodos and that to get hide. Beat on this dodo real quick. You're not gonna get a lot of hide from them though. Now, my server is quite boosted, so I'm getting quite a lot. But Lystros, Moss Chops, and Fiomias are going to get you way more hide than you killing dodos and those are passive creatures so they're not going to attack back so once you get some hide and you've got enough materials to make your thatch hut 
I suggest you make your thatch hut. So let's actually go to our engrams and we'll go to structures. If you don't know how to unlock these engrams, you need to press start and then you can go through here and go through the engrams that you can unlock. Hide sleeping bag. I forgot what is, are these the levels on the left? So that's level four. So you can get this pretty early while you're getting all the thatch and stuff. And then at level six, seven, or is this tier seven? I'm, I'm unsure what they're, what they're doing here. I think that's the way it's working out, right? Because they've they've organized this differently from when I, yeah, I think that is the level. The level on the left is the level that you need to be in order to craft that. But you'll get to like level seven pretty quickly. I would suggest you get a bed instead of a sleeping bag because a bed is a pot, is a permanent spawn point while a sleeping bag can only be used once. Although a sleeping bag costs half the amount of resources as a bed, a bed is just way better for the long run. So create your bed or unlock your bed, unlock the thatch foundations and all that sort of stuff, the thatch ceiling, all that sort of building crap. And then build your thatch base. So let's get the stuff that we need to build a thatch base. We're just gonna go one by one. So that and three walls should do it. So foundation and walls. Roof. Door frame. Door. And inside you want to place your bed. So let's craft that real quick. Let's go to beds. Let's get that ready. Let's close this door so we've got the space. Aww, seriously? There we go. And then name this bed like whatever you want to name it, beach bed or something like that. Beach. And then that's your first hut. <laughs> You've got your first home, but do not get comfortable. This is completely terrible and this isn't going to protect you against anything. Any random survivor who just started can get in here and break your bed and rob all your stuff so you definitely want to upgrade ASAP but once you've got this now you can start engaging in some risky maneuvers so I'm gonna use this Griffin obviously you won't have the Griffin right about now you just be running about living that sort of life but let me quickly scout out and see if we can find a Dillo because that's the next thing you want to do the next thing you want to do is you want to find a lovely Dillo and you want to beat him up that vulture. Oh, we, I thought it was an icky thornus. There's a dillo. <clears throat> Dillos are pretty easy to take out. All you need to do is circle around them. They're going to try and spit at you and they're going to miss. And then you just circle around and beat it up in its head as much as you can until it goes sleep. Wow, it's really getting some hits on me. It should not be getting any hits on me. What the hell? What level is, oh, it's 130. Yeah, do not go for 130, Dillo. Especially when you're naked like I am. Go for like a level 30, Dillo, or something like that. A 130 might be a bit much. You'll get really hurt from that. So now, ah, oh, you bastard Itchy Thornus. You're so lucky I don't have anything to kill you with. So, Dillos are pretty easy to tame. I would suggest getting a pack of them, like three Dillos or something like that, as that will really help protect you against any other beach bums. And beach bums are people who've just spawned in and they're gonna try and rob your stuff. So, let's put some meat in his inventory and this will tame him up. Now these rates are quite boosted, so he's gonna tame almost instantly, but on your server, or if you're playing on a fish or something like that, it's probably not going to tame that quickly. It's gonna take a little while, but Dillos are really, really quick to tame. If they're like level 130, then they're gonna take a little longer. 
but generally Dillos aren't going to take a long time. So tame about three of them and these will protect you against pretty much anyone else on the beach unless there's like someone who knows what they're doing. Obviously it won't protect you against that and it won't protect you against aloes. So those things over there are allosauruses. You really don't want to be tangling with those, especially with your little Dilophosaurus. It's not going to work out. So once you've got your thatch base up and running, you've got a few dillos and you've got your spawn point. At that point, you want to get off the beach. Like you want to get off the beach because being on the beach is where everyone spawns in because it's the easy area to spawn in and it's where you'll be easily seen. So what you want to do is you want to move your dillos, you want to run with your dillos, uh, I'm guessing, and just move a little bit inland. So let's go up this hill and preferably you want to build in a bunch of trees as it will be harder to see you around there. Don't fight carnals, <laughs> run away from all that sort of stuff and you'll probably be dying a few times to get hair to be honest. And here's a place in some trees. Honestly, like you want to move way further in and you want to be around way more trees than this. But it's cool for like a starter base just so you have somewhere to hide your spawn base while whilst you go and tame a ter pteranodon and move a little further in. So what you want to do here is just build a thatch hut with a spawn point in the space that you want to build. And then once you do that, you want to upgrade that thatch hut to stone ASAP. So you're gonna use your hatchet to get a bunch of stone, wood and thatch in order to make stone foundations and all that sort of stuff and upgrade your base to stone. Now stone will prevent any noobs from being able to get into your base. Wood is a waste of time, so don't even worry about that. Just get to stone tier as soon as possible. Only people that will be able to get into your base in stone tear would be people that have explosives. So once you get to stone tear, what I would suggest doing next is to obviously build a one by one stone base with a bed inside it, maybe a mortar and pestle so that you're able to create narcotics and that sort of stuff. And then go and tame yourself a pteranodon so you can fly about and actually find your actual base location because Anywhere that you can run on foot from the beach isn't a great base location, to be honest. So, to tame a pteranodon, you will generally need a bowler and you can use your wooden club and then you'll also need chitin to make the saddle for it. So, do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through every small step of how to tame a pteranodon and all that sort of stuff. I've done a video on how to do that so you can check that out but tame the pteranodon and then you want to look for an actual base location. Make sure it's covered by trees and it's somewhere away from resources, somewhere where you don't believe people will look and you can stay hidden for the foreseeable future. Also, do not chop down the trees around your base. Don't do that. You want as much cover from the sky as possible because people will be flying about and you don't want them to be able to see your base because that is a raid opportunity. So once you've got your base location, you want to build a base that can protect your tames. Build your base with the basic things in there, your bed, your forges, your smithy, your mortar and pestle, all that good stuff. There's loads of videos on how to build a small starter base online. If you want me to make one of those videos, then be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll try to make one of those. But once you've got your base location and you've built the basic base, you want to get some protection around it. I would suggest going with Plant Species X, get a few of those up and running. You probably won't be able to get auto turrets in like your first day. You won't even have Plant Species X in your first day. But just try and build a base that can protect your dinos. So you want to have your dinos in an enclosed space at the least, preferably behind at least stone. So once you have that, then you can start taming the resource harvesting tames. So next you want the resource harvesting dinos. So that will be 
a trike or stegle for berries that will help you gain narco berries so that you can tame the better dinos and then you want the raptor or carno for meat the raptor is the easier tame so i suggest going for that first and you can collect a lot of meat for that with that to feed your dinos and i would suggest also getting a better pteranodon your first pteranodon doesn't need to be very good i would suggest going for like level 30 or something like that but then once you're able to run around on a raptor actually get a little bit of prime maybe you've got a carnal that will be actually better because then you can get prime meat and actually tame a better pteranodon then you can go ahead and tame yourself a level 100 or something like that to move around a little bit better after that, I wouldn't suggest sticking with that to round on. You'd want to look into creating a dodo kibble farm, taming up some dodos, getting some carrots growing in order to make dodo kibble and actually tame 150 to round on so that you have a batch of 150 to round on to actually get involved in some PvP and move around and be in the game basically. So that's all the stuff that you need. Let's unclaim these dinos because I, I don't need them. Goodbye, Mr. Trike. So, the next thing you guys need to know is use your resources instead of storing them overnight. Anything that you can use and build something out of it and put it to use ASAP, do that. Do not keep a bunch of metal ingots sitting down and you're not using it. Instead, Build it into walls and put those walls up. Don't leave the walls about because people can steal that easier than they can steal metal ingots. But if you've got any raw resources, try and use that ASAP so that you can actually put that to use and it doesn't get stolen overnight. You should also think about joining a tribe, especially if you're playing on official servers. If you're playing on official servers, going solo is pretty much psycho. It's very, very hard to succeed solo when you are playing on official servers, although I really don't suggest you play on official servers, but we'll talk about that in a bit. But you can use the Arc PS4 Discord. Go to discord.me forward slash Arc PS4 to find people to tribe up with. Get some friends, if you have friends who have the game, get them together and play with them and get as many people in your tribe as well. I wouldn't say, don't, don't just pad your tribe with people who don't know how to play the game because that's a waste of time and then you're gonna be using more resources than you're gaining. But get a few people together who are willing to put that work in and get a tribe going. You also don't wanna trust anyone, especially if you're playing on official servers don't trust anyone because people will stab you in the back and betray you. But try to find good allies and don't show anyone where your base is if you can help it. If you find some people who you think are cool and you want to do a few trades with them, meet them in a neutral place like at an obelisk or at a landmark that you both know where to go to or tell them the coordinates that you're going to. Don't tell them to come to your base. Don't show anyone where your base is because they may wait for you to go to sleep and then break into your base and steal all your stuff. Now, another thing you need to know about are alpha tribes. The alpha tribe is the most powerful tribe on the server. They generally set the server rules and some of them are dicks. Honestly, the way power works in ARK, in my opinion, is a mix of political power, people on the server not wanting to raid you and all that sort of stuff, you having friends and allies, and having a bunch of turrets and defenses. Defenses are power in arc. If people can't rob your stuff or raid your base, then you are more powerful than them. Because if you can raid their base and steal all their stuff and make them start from square one, and they can't do it to you, then you are the more powerful tribe. So focus on defenses. Focus on getting as many turrets as up as possible and trying to make your base really really difficult to raid so that people look at it and they're like you know what i can't be bothered with that that is the type of thought you want going through people's heads when they see your base i would highly suggest waiting until you have defenses before talking in chat at least get some plant x get a few turrets up before engaging in chat and talking 
too much because people will be searching for people who are new to the server in order to raid them and get rid of them before they have the chance to build up. And honestly, I would suggest you completely forget official servers. In my opinion, it's too grindy and it takes a lot of commitment to be successful. The amount of grind to fun ratio is like eight to two and that is just not cool in my opinion. I would suggest finding a good official server with boosted rates that you enjoy. You may want to test a few different servers out as well as a few different rates. I think the official server rates are just crazy. I don't think they're healthy in the slightest, but you might like that. You might like the hardcore survival aspect that that brings with having to take so long to do everything and resources being so scarce. But I do believe that the community on official servers is extremely toxic, so I wouldn't recommend it. If you wanna learn how to join my Ragnarok PVP server, then stay until the end of the video and use the link in the description to apply to join. Now that is my basic PvP starter guide. I will be making more advanced guides to let you guys know different strategies to employ later on down the line after you've gotten setting up a little bit. I may make base videos and stuff like that. Although I'm not that much of a builder to be honest, I would suggest you leave a comment down below. Let me know what kind of things you guys want to learn and I'll try and make a video on that. Thanks for watching and liking and subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next ARC PS4 tutorial. If you want to join my boosted rented server, then use the link in the description to apply to join the server or go to jcarterray.com forward slash ARC apply. This will be a boosted PVP server, so you don't have to grind for days to have an hour of fun, unlike on official rates. All the rates and more information will be sent to you after you apply and are approved. This will be a server for majority 18 plus players. Any under 18 players will be interviewed by me to make sure that they're mature and there will be no salty squeakers on this server whatsoever. There will also be monthly packages for higher tier patrons such as bullets and materials there will be no pay to win like wyverns or big dinos or anything like that in order to keep it balanced but you will be rewarded for contributing a higher amount to keep the server active again use the link in the description to apply to join the server or go to jcarterray.com forward slash arc apply apply now because this server is going to be lit and if you're on this server, you will be included in my YouTube videos and live streams. And I'll also help promote your channel if you've got a channel or whatever and you get in a big raid or something, then I will include your link in the description if I show that raid on my channel. So if you've got a YouTube channel, you've got another reason to join the server. It's been a cold winter and it's lasted far too long. So all this warmth I share with you